Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I hop online, I take your hot takes, unpopular opinions, and tough questions, and I answer the best ones in videos such as these, literally in this series called Let's Argue. Let's, Let's go. go! You're giving Iridescence a 10, even if it's terrible. I mean, what, what would the motivation be? I'm not fucking in Brockhampton. I'm just reviewing them. If I was a member of Brockhampton, and I was on the Brockhampton payroll, then, yeah, sure, giving him a 10 would probably make sense. But since I'm not, th this is me asking to be a member of Brockhampton. Please let me in Brockhampton. Cal Chuchesta should have a review channel. What's he gonna review? Hot dogs. That's all he eats. Graduation is Kanye's worst album from a musical standpoint because most of the songs sonically sound dated now and it makes them a bit harder to enjoy. Yeah, I, I do agree that Graduation probably is one of Kanye's most dated albums uh, because he wasn't so much sticking to his signature sound like he was on his previous couple of records. He didn't really drum up much in the way of music or ideas on that album that were kind of a shape of, of hip-hop to come. So, you know, it, it just kind of feels like a relic of the bling era in a lot of ways because that's the aesthetic that he was embracing. Though there were some smart fusions of pop and hip-hop and electronic music on there. Do not forget that, though. They just weren't all that predictive, I guess. Uh, look, it's not a bad album. I don't think the fact that it uh, does sound a little dated and uh, a little stuck in the past, I guess, uh, makes it a bad record. I think there's still a lot of good songs on there, but maybe that's just because um, I, I, I'm old. Let's Agree is a better series than Let's Argue it as it spreads more love and positivity. Well, may maybe we'll do a Let's Agree in the next one, okay? Fantano has a secret desire to become a serious artist, but has been scared of pursuing it. After years of criticizing other artists, now he will be the one being criticized. <laughs> So instead, he uses Cal Chuchesta as his outlet under the guise of being intentionally bad. Wow, this guy really psychoanalyzed me. Jesus Christ. Okay, one. Um, I I don't personally feel like I'm I'm making intentionally bad songs with Cal Chuchesta. I just think they're silly. I just think they're funny, because I, I don't know. A lot of the work and stuff that I have to do online is very serious and is very dry and I used to have a meme channel where I can kind of just like let loose and just be like fuck it I'm just gonna throw whatever at the wall and just be like Ugh. and I feel like with uh you know working with Cal I can I can do that and I get to make some money off DistroKid at the same time just dicking around because you know sometimes I just want to dick around and Fantano has a secret desire to become a serious artist oh but I'm scared of pursuing it after years of critiquing other artists I'm gonna be the one that's critiqued out! Dude, whether or not I come out with music, I'm critiqued every fucking day. Uh, your hairline's fucked, your mustache looks dumb, you're fat, your review sucks, you're white, you're stupid, you're ugly, you shouldn't have said this, you shouldn't have said that, that review score is wrong, that review score is wrong, you should have scored it this, that review's wrong. Honestly, at this point, I'm convinced if I shut this whole fucking thing down and then just started coming out with music instead, the reception would probably be way less nasty and uh, corrosive to my self-esteem than putting out music reviews every day. But furthermore, after years of doing what I do and enjoying the stability of it and also meeting other artists who are successful in their field and, and are making serious music, Honestly, I, I, I do not envy them. And it has nothing to do with the music that they're making or the music that I could be making. It's just really the, the life that they lead. It's, it's very tough. You know, there's a lot of touring. There's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of unpredictability. And whether or not you're successful, a lot of the time doesn't really come down to whether or not you're making good music. So every once in a while, uh, I just kind of like to dick around and, and make a funny song with, uh, with Cal. What's your problem with that?
Give me a break. And please stop it with this what? This messenger bag, Hawaiian shirt, straw hat combo. This is violence. You are really bad at predicting the commercial viability of artists slash albums. Well, good thing that that's not what I'm fucking trying to do. I'm trying to just say what albums and artists I like. This isn't the predict what albums are gonna go platinum show. I mean, granted, let, let, let me S my D and say that I predicted Post Malone's Better Now would be a hit because it sounded like a friggin' hit. And I mean, how many artists over the years uh, have I sort of brought an audience to or at least helped bring an audience to? But still, that being said, uh, I'm not trying to predict what's hot here. I'm just trying to like say, hey, I think this is good. Try this out. Hey, I think that's pretty cool. Give this a shot. If it doesn't get popular, I don't give a fuck. I enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoy it too. Jane's Addiction was the first underground rock band that broke into the mainstream before Nirvana, Soundgarden, etc. Without Jane's Addiction, a lot of them probably wouldn't exist without Jane's Addiction. What? Like there were no underground rock bands that hit the mainstream in the 70s or the 80s? Like what about the Stooges? What about the Talking Heads? What about New Order? They once started as a little band called Joy Division in the underground, and then they went on as New Order to release the widest selling single of all time, Blue Monday. Thank you very much. American music critics constantly fail to analyze grime and UK rap in an effective way. Drawing comparisons and parallels between grime and traditional hip hop is a fool's errand. I see what you're saying here, and it's not necessarily because the comparisons and the parallels are totally illegitimate. I think they are very legitimate. There are parallels worth talking about in UK hip hop when you're discussing some of the artists over there right now who are embracing uh, more of these trap style beats, which of course came from over here. We can't just sit back and pretend that UK hip hop and, and grime are just happening in this bubble and aren't influenced by anything outside of the country or coming out of America, etc. But our dear friend here does make a good point. If you are reviewing some grime or some UK hip hop and the whole foundation of your review is built on whatever the similarities there are between that particular artist and what's going on in American hip hop or American hip hop in general, uh, to me, that's, that's not really uh, explaining much. It's not really kind of getting to the heart of what makes that album good as a grime album. The entire yellow flannel, red flannel tradition ruins the surprise factor of your reviews. I, I agree it does, but I honestly, I, I don't think most people want a surprise. I think a lot of people want to know via some kind of visual aid, like, this is me saying this is great. This is me saying this is awesome because other otherwise you can't always tell in the thumbnail. So yes, you're right, but I, I don't think it's what people want. And if in fact you do want a surprise, then, you know, just, just click, click on my videos like this, you know, just, just watch, just watch them all like this. And then, then you'll never know. You'll never know anything. You won't even know what you're clicking on. That's a total surprise. That's the ultimate surprise. Creshawn was ahead of her time. Right now, a lot of people seem to have more of a tolerance, even embrace for outrageous, silly internet era pop rap. And her tunes totally predated that. Helps that she's backed by good production and her hook game is shockingly strong. Yeah, this is actually kind of a good point. I think Creshawn in a way certainly paved the way for a bad baby or a little Tay or basically any gimmicky female meme rapper right now who's uh, who's eaten pretty good. Although little Debbie still seems to be doing her thing, but she's kind of wallowing in, in relative obscurity at the moment. So I, I, I don't quite know where exactly the, the, the line breaks or, you know, what, what entirely makes uh, a meme rapper viral hit, but um, Krayshawn, I, th I think definitely you're, you're right. She, she was kind of the precursor to, uh, to some of that. <laughs> she, she's like the, the little Kim of this internet meme rap shit. Critics need to stop taking on the role of a psychologist by doubting the validity of an artist's depression or other uh, mental health condition. It's fine to explain why you like or don't like a song, but to claim it's inauthentic is harmful 
and out with the boundaries of music reviewers. This is a good point. Here's some good points. I'm certainly guilty of stepping over this line a little bit here and there, but he here's my struggle because here's here's a few things, a few thoughts on this. One, also super harmful, I think glorifying the effects or sort of the ailments that come along with mental health. Uh, even drug addiction too, which I think a lot of artists who ride on that side of the tracks uh, tend to display pretty prominently in their music as well. Uh, I understand it's a reality uh, as an outlet for a lot of people, but to sort of come out uh, in such a way where your position on using it as a crutch is either positive or neutral uh, does, I think, also uh, create a moral quandary. And on top of it, it, it does become kind of difficult as a critic to not wrestle with that depression that is on the record, uh, even if it is authentic, uh, when it is kind of a central theme and a focus to the music's appeal. And whether you want to admit it or not, there are artists out there who the appeal of their music, it's not their singing voice, it's not their instrumentals, it's the fact that they are depressed and their listeners are uh, sort of using that music as a way to feel less isolated in that emotion or to feel some kind of catharsis or validation in that emotion, which is completely fine. Totally valid reason to listen to something that has an emotional quality that you are seeking out. Uh, there are people who listen to a myriad of different songs and albums with a myriad of different emotional qualities because they want to sort of uh, feel that particular emotion. And that emotion that's a central focus to the album, whether it be happiness or anger or sadness, if it's put onto paper, onto the record, not whether or not the artist has it, but if it's put onto paper in a way that feels like it's being overstated or it's kind of inauthentic or it's kind of fashionable or it is, um, I guess, kind of gussied up in some kind of way that is, is easily noticeable, I, I think it's worth discussing. I think it's worth calling out. It can certainly sour the presentation of the music or whether or not it resonates with me personally. And again, it's not even merely a depression thing. There are lots of love songs out there I've heard that merely feel like they're going through the motions and don't really mean anything. There are tons of totally vapid and generic and dime a dozen one-dimensional angry metalcore albums where it's like, whoa, you're just like another angry fucking guy in this genre full of angry fucking guys who gives a shit. And critiquing the disconnect of that emotional input onto the album it can feel like, or it literally can, uh, be stepping over a, a line of sorts. But I feel like struggling to find that balance is, is certainly better and more worthwhile than completely ignoring the subject altogether just because of the difficult situations that might create. I'm not just gonna run to the other side of the room and be like, well, the, uh, the drums uh, are... Uh, and that has been another episode of Let's Argue. Thank y'all for watching. You're the best. I love you. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, argue, argue, argue forever.